All right, Adam, take it away. Hi, everyone. This is Adam Weiser from the Illinois Self-Advocacy Alliance. We call ourselves the Alliance for short. I am the project director for the Alliance. During our, our four advisors allies only meetup, all attendees will be in listen only mode. If you want to connect with the presenter or the Alliance, please use the chat box. You can also raise your hand if you want to speak. We will have time for questions and answers at the end of the presentation. This presentation is being recorded and will be placed on the Alliance's YouTube channel. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel where we have more than 140 recorded presentations that are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days of the year. Today, we have an exciting presentation for you. We'll learn about advocacy through artwork from self-advocate artists and support staff from Arts of Life. We hope that you can use some of these ideas with your member group chapters. Arts of Life av av advances the creative arts community by providing artists with intellectual and developmental disabilities, a collective space to expand their practice and strengthen their leadership. Let's welcome Arts of Life. Hi everyone, this is Rio speaking. Um, thanks so much Adam and Christine for having us. We're really excited. Um, I am one of the facilitators of um, our self-advocacy group and you guys will see Annie Solar. She is kind of currently Zooming in from California. Um, she is the, also like the main facilitator for self-advocacy group. So uh, just to give you guys uh, a little bit of information, we will be doing a small PowerPoint presentation that will probably last about 25, 30 minutes. Then we will have a short amount of time for questions. And then right after that, we can show you guys the digital version of our zine that we have been working on very diligently for several months now. So I'm going to go ahead and start our presentation. I will be sharing my screen. If you have questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat and I will do my best to Catch those um, once our presentation is um, closing up. Rio, this is Christine, and Hi, Christine. I made sure, there you go, that you uh, are a co-host and that you will be able to share the presentation. Yes. Perfect. Thanks so much, Christine. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Rio. All right. So we are self-advocacy group at Arts of Life. Uh-oh. Happening here. Sorry, one second, you guys. I just gotta make sure the artist can see this the full screen. Sorry, everyone. Oh my god, where did it go? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm not the most tech savvy person. Give me one second to make yeah. sure that the artist just can see. Take your time. No worries. This is Christine. Yeah. <laughs> Give us one second, Christine. <laughs> oh Thank you, Chris. God. You have as many seconds as you need. This is Ted. Oh, thank I'm. You. Oh, thank you, Ted. <laughs> yes, take as many seconds as you need. All right. Mm -hmm. Now you guys can see it? Yeah. Okay. Thank you guys for waiting. All right. <laughs> Same <Thank> thing. <you. laughs> okay. Perfect. So um, the contents of this presentation, we're going to start with introductions. Um, then Chris will give us a little bit of the history of Arts of Life as an organization. Um, Ted will also be sharing a little bit about the history of Arts of Life. Then each of the artists and I will talk about what makes Arts of Life unique to us. Afterwards, we will go into a little bit more about our, our self-advocacy group here at Arts of Life. And then Nick is going to close out the presentation talking about what we discuss in our self-advocacy group meetings and also introducing our current project, which is our zine. 
Afterwards, we'll have a little bit of time for questions, like I mentioned before, and then we will show y'all the zine that we've been working on. So without further ado, uh, this is Chris View. Igor. Hi, I am Chris View. I go by he or him. My work straddles the line abstract and representational. This is due to my planned, yet dynamic, brush and line work. Upon first one see a blend of colors and textures that reveal themselves are landscapes of weathered coastline. My favorite thing about being an artist is I can let my wild imagination show. The images that inspire that you inspire me are landscapes. I feel that making landscapes is the best way to show my talent. As an artist, most I use chalk pastel. Great. So I'm actually going to be sending you guys this presentation so that y'all can look and learn a little bit more. You can see this link down here. That will take you to Chris's and the other artists' portfolio pages on the Arts of Life website. Here you can see an example of Chris's work. Um, he typically works in chalk pastel and watercolor. This piece is called Field of Flowers, and it was made in 2022. Nick? Hi, I'm Nick. Um, you can, my pronouns are he or they, and I like to read my bio to you. I like, I use different types of medias. I like to paint and chalk pastels. I enjoy drawing people and building and different scenery with bold colors. Great. Here you can see an example of Nick's work. This is a portrait of the Obamas. This is a chalk pastel drawing and it was made in 2022. Ted? My name is Ted Graham Barini. Barini, I am also in a band. Um, I go by he or him. Um, I'm in a band with Nick as well. I, um, I love doing acrylic and I also do comics. Thanks, Ted. Here you can see an example of Ted's work. It's an acrylic painting on canvas. It's called Christmas in the City. And this work was made in 2022 as well. Chris? History of Arts of Life, Veronica Ronnie Grooklick and Denise Fisher. Arts of Life was started by Veronica Ronnie Kerlick and Denise Fisher. Denise and Ronnie had worked together in Isola, where Denise realized Ronnie's talent at making art. Ronnie had a hard personal story with the history of institutionalization. Denise wanted to collaborate with Ronnie to create a space that was for people with disabilities created by people with disabilities. Together they worked to create the first Arts of Life studio in 2000 at 2010 West Carroll in Chicago. Great. On the screen you can see um, Ronnie's headshot and you can also see one of her works called 68 Baby Dolls. This was made in 2006. The baby dolls were a really common motif in her work and you can see them throughout each of her works. Okay, Ted, you want to talk about the Chicago um, studio? Now, along with uh, Chris, I'm going to um, talk a little more uh, involved, uh, involving um, the Chicago studio and uh, Gormby Studios. And 
I also will talk about uh, the most recent uh, studio as well. So, um, the Glen, uh, the uh, Chicago studio was made in 20, uh, 2000, like, um, Chris said it has about what what is it twenty mm -hmm. twenty to twenty five twenty to twenty five people uh it was means Seven. What is it? Are you trying to remember the square footage? Yeah, six thousand. Remember, six thousand square feet. Um, great. You want to move to the yeah. photos? Yes. Cool. Move to the photos. So, do you remember the names of these people? Um, what? Um, the left is G. The last is G, um, and on the right we have. Go back to that page. Uh, and on the right, and on the left side, we have G, and on the right, right we have. Uh, she, uh, she left. Alicia. 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 Great. Okay, Alicia. now you want, to, you want to talk about the North Shore now? Um, the North Shore has about 6,000 square uh, feet. Um, uh, um it, it has uh the same amount of people as the Gwen uh as the Gwen the uh Chicago studio has the same amount of people there. Um, the most recent, um, um, I think you're skipping ahead a little bit. Let's look at the photos of Brian and Bum Oh, uh, these are two, um, people who are, have been most recently added. They're Brian's, uh, their names are Brian Kaplan and Von Trell and Von Trell Nunn. Great. Now we can talk about the South Side. Most recently, um, the, um, the most recent aspect of our life has, is, has been made into a church. Yeah, it's, it's hosted in the church. It has been, has been hosted in a church. Um, Great. Do you want to look at the photos of the yes. two artists? Do you remember their names? Uh, Katrina and Lewis. The most, uh, these are two people whose names, whose names are Katrina and Lewis. Thanks, Ted. All right. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, the home and community programs, because this is something that I 
work in every day. So it's another expansion of our community that opened in 2023. Um, it's a part we form partnerships with art centers located close to us. So we partner with the Evanston Art Center and the Art Center in Highland Park to offer classes that are open to our studio artists as well as the residents of these towns. The goal of this program is to let our artists spend time outside of spaces that are exclusively for people with disabilities, um, as well as help create integrated spaces between members of the IDD community and the wider community. Um, we also offer in-home services, which take the form of one-on-one -on -one sessions in artists' homes. We help set up individuals' practices in a low sensory environment for those who cannot or don't want to sustain a daily practice inside the studio or are overwhelmed by large amounts of people or um, large amounts of sens sensory input from the large group of artists that work in the studio. Here you can see two examples of our home and community programs. One of the classes that we offer is a ceramics course that's hosted at the Art Center Highland Park. In these photos, you can see Kelly Stone and Phil Gazzolo. Um, Kelly Stone is actually one of our art longest running artists. He's been working at Arts of Life for 20 years. Um, Maurice is here on the right, and this is actually during one of her in-home sessions with Annie. All right, Nick, do you wanna talk about what's unique? Hey, yes, I would. Great. Let me line it up here. Here on that lower, lower line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Art to Life is different from in, any kind of program because you do art. You get paid for it because in a different program you work is peace work art or life you get a siphon and uh and art self a in a different setting you get a pay rate. Chris, what makes our life unique to you? We make and decide what the community looks like. And we have studio meetings. The artist ideas are important. Great. Ted, what makes our um, life unique to you? I you uh where, where so you said you were talking about how you build the community and how you're respected as an artist. Um one of the things that make our life unique um, to me is how we build build a community, and we also are are respected for what we do around here. Because it wouldn't happen, or uh, it wouldn't happen without us, in my opinion. It's true. So, it's the yeah. Old studio, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what makes Arts of Life unique to me as someone who is an employee of the organization. The first thing that I really appreciate about Arts of Life is that it is an employer of choice, which means that the employees who work here choose to work here um, because we enjoy the work that we do and we enjoy the organization. Um, and the leadership is really intentional about making sure that we enjoy working here and that it's an enjoyable experience. 
Another reason I really enjoy being here is that we have a collective decision-making model, which means that from the top down or the bottom up, um, each individual's input matters. So we have a series of committees, um, people participate in a collective decision-making process. Um, we also have a really unique set of values that set our, us apart from other or arts organizations. Um, those are inspiring artistic expression. We also aim to build a strong community. We also aim to promote self-respect. Mm -hmm. And along with that, we help, hope to help develop independence. All of these things are things that are really important to us inside the studio and these skills that the artists learn in terms of autonomy and you know, having self-respect for themselves, those all are reflected in their lives outside of the studio. And that's a really important thing to us. Chris, do you want to talk about the history? History of Self-Advocacy Group at Arts for Life. While Arts of Life has always had a self-advocacy group, the previous versions died out during the pandemic. It was reinvigorated after Chris Vio and Alicia Costellini work with Self-Advocacy Alliance of Illinois. I thought we needed a self-advocacy group to change how the community treats disabled people. I thought as artists we could make art in another way to show advocacy. Great. Here on the screen you can see an image that Chris drew for our zine. It's a drawing of people who are living in an ICF, right? who are looking out at the community. Nick, do you want to talk about why you joined? Yes. I joined because I needed to learn how to stick up for myself. And think for myself for a self-advocacy group should help you in your daily life. If you have a problem you could put down it in to express how you feel okay let's talk a little bit more about self-advocacy group mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Topics. We talk about self accuracy, home at work with staff, family, and etc. We talk about One problem as we can help one each other to fix problems as a group. We talk about, we feel doing art. Great. Let's talk about our zine. Okay, bear with me. <laughs> You're doing great. We want to get our story out to the public. 
we make a zine. A zine is home made pro P project. project that is a craft. Our zine will feature on transportation and home advocacy. The zine will have artwork and pictures to show. Great. Here is one of the drawings, another one of the drawings that's featured in the zine. This is by Omar Abelsheik, and it's called Bus of Doom. It's an oil pastel drawing on paper. All right, so now we have a little bit of time for questions before we dive into our zine. Um, does anyone have questions for us right now? Yes. Thank you, Chris and Ted and Nick and Rio. This is Christine with the Alliance. So for any of the folks joining us today, if you have a question that you would like to ask, please go ahead and do so now. You can either take yourself off of mute and speak it, that's a choice, or you can choose to type it in using the chat box and we will read it. I, I did get a question, this is Christine, and I'm going to ask this question. How do you figure out which medium works best for people? You guys want to answer? Chris? Chris has, Chris is typing. Um, what we usually do is we try to figure out. Okay, that's really cool. Here, go behind it. Let me just go on this. It's slower. All right. I'm not too amateur. <laughs> <laughs> Got an obstacle course right here. Uh, what I was saying. How do you choose choose the medium that you use? We chose the medium that we use. We usually use color pencils, or oil pastels, or paint. So how do you pick? Like, what makes you decide? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, sometimes we use. You can. It, how you feel on that day or uh, what kind of picture that you draw or drawing, you can figure out if you want to use color pencil or oil. Yeah. Chris, do you have something to add to that? He's still typing. Yeah. I was going to say that it also depends on the paper that you use. Yeah. I, I use media that I use in my art practice. Yeah, so Chris oh, said he, you. yeah, he uses media that he uses in his art practice. Okay. So for the zine, yeah. Did that answer your question, Kasim? It did. Thank you. Yes, okay. it did. Thank you very much. Um, for Where everyone question yeah Where for did that question come from uh it's someone that messaged me privately you're not able to maybe see all the messages on the screen and what it sounds like is if our advisors brought some different medium to their self-advocacy group meetings maybe they brought i know nick you talked about colored pencils 
Um, maybe you have some pastels or maybe there's markers, you know, just bringing some different medium um, and allowing people maybe to do some artwork based on the topic that you're talking about. I'd like to share some more comments. Um, we have so cool. You all are very talented. Where do you get your inspiration from? Is it people, feelings, nature? So where from does books. your, from books? Oh, that's a great place too. We have a, um, I don't know if you know this, but we have a library that we have a huge library. Okay. That's, you where, we, that's where we get our inspiration from. Yeah, we have a lot of um, art books there, books about different practices and also books featuring the work of different artists. Um, a lot of our artists use that as inspiration. Chris? Nature and Feelings. Nature and Feelings. Yeah, oh. Chris is a, can I speak for you a little bit yeah. about your practice? Chris is a huge um, nature guy. Like all of his work is very focused on the earth and his relationship to the earth. Um, and he also writes poetry and a lot of his poetry mm -hmm. books, well, I think all of your poetry mm -hmm. books are about the changing of the seasons and um, different aspects of nature that he observes. Did you have anything yes. to add to that? Thank you. And I will mm -hmm. add, this is Christine, that Chris wait. did a, wait. oh, I'm sorry. Wait. <laughs> Sorry, Chris is typing one more thing. Hmm. I have auto bio. Oh yeah, you also have an autobiography. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Chris All has right. a lot of published work. I think it's on Amazon, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. his work is on Amazon. I think if you just search Chris Yu, you'd be able to find him. Um, thank you. And thank you for telling me to wait while you included that. I will share that Chris did a webinar for us um, and he shared some of his artwork as well as some of his poetry. When I send out this recording, I will also include the link to that particular webinar for you to check out. We do have a couple of more questions that I want to make sure we get time for before um, we go back to our presentation. This is about acrylic. Is acrylic the paint that is used or is it the painting itself? Paint that we use. Uh, acrylic, I can argue that. Go ahead, Is the paint that some of us use. Thank you, Ted, for answering that. Here's another question. Have any of the artists sold their artwork before? Is that important to you? <laughs> yes, a lot of our, a lot of us like for instance, I have Sold my artwork for I would say millions of dollars. Millions, not millions. <laughs> Thousands for sure. Not um, millions. Thousands of dollars. Quite not having quite hit the million not dollar mark. Not um. millions, but Thousands of you yeah. know what, Ted, I like your enthusiasm and the way you're looking forward to getting that million. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll let y'all know once we hit a million dollars. Yes. Here's another question. Does Arts of Life only focus on visual and performance arts or do you all take on writers as well? We all do. Yeah. Uh, like, for, for instance, I don't know if you know this, but we 
roads um poetry as uh well as visual and performance art. Okay. Yeah. And so, we also have books out. Yeah. Poetry okay. books. And we are in a band, so we have a lot of um music in us and we also like to do yoga. So we try to do a little bit of everything. Yeah. So yeah. the studio primarily focuses on visual art. Um, we do a lot of programming that is beyond visual art, though. Um, so like the artist mentioned, they are in a really freaking awesome band called Van Gogh. Oh, Van Gogh. Ah. They have a show at Talia Hall on the 29th. Right. It's really exciting. This um, and the artists are all very talented. So they are all interdisciplinary. They yeah. practice a lot of different things. Um, everyone who's in this group right now is, you know, a visual artist in combination with a lot of other mediums. Um, so Chris writes poetry, Nick and Ted um, both participate in the band and Ted is also an actor as well. So we, we're doing a lot over here. All right. So two more things I want to share before we turn it back over. The first is a comment. I am a blogger who writes about being black and autistic, but I don't know where to start with finding money to support my art while continuing to advocate. To the artists, how do you balance doing the art that you love using your art for your advocacy and find a way to make a bit of money? And this person says they are interested in arts of life. Rio, so, can you answer that question? Sure, uh, I can. So um, the really cool thing about arts of life is that, like Nick mentioned before, it's dissimilar from other um, day programs where individuals are working for what is called a piecework rate. Right. which means that, for example, if you're folding boxes, each box that you fold, you get 25 cents, something like that. Um, artists here get what is called a stipend. So every month they receive money for working at Arts of Life because this is their job. Um, so they receive a, a stipend. Um, every artist gets a stipend, even if they do not sell work. If the artists sell work, then their work is essentially, they make the money off of their work. So it's a typical gallery setup. Um, so it's, I'm not quite sure the, the split. I think it's something like 70, 30. Y'all would yeah. probably know a little bit better than me. Yeah. So I the artists, 60, 40. 60, 40. Thanks, Dave. So um, the artists make 60% of their, of the sales of their work and the studio makes 40%. Um, this is actually a, a lot higher uh, percentage than other gallery spaces. Um, so their stipends, if they sell work, also include their gallery sales. And um, transportation. And transportation, yes. So there's also compensation for transportation as well. Um, and then the artists also have the opportunity to join different tracks. So for example, if there is an artist that is very, very interested in focusing on a way to make money off of their work, then they could join what is called our career track. And in the career track, you're gonna be meeting about once every two weeks or once monthly. Um, and one of the advisors, one of the facilitators here who is active in the art and gallery scene will help you get be able to participate in shows. So I'll give you some examples right now. Um, some of our artists just finished showing their work um, at the Other Art Fair in New York City. It's one of the biggest outsider art fairs in the world. And this coming month, we have artists that are showing work in Expo, which is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, um, art fair in the United States and uh, internationally. So we, our artists are not just participating in what is called the other art scene. 
Um, they are actively participating in the art world. Their work is shown. They are making money off of their work and they are treated as just a regular artist. Amazing. Thank you. Amazing. I appreciate all the questions and comments that have come from our participants. Here's the last question, and then we will turn the presentation back over to you. How yeah. much do you decide, or how do you decide how much to ask for your work? Do you want me to answer this one? We really, uh, we really, um, the art to life. What you do is you come in the morning and You're talking about the price of the work, like when oh, we're having a yeah, you can show. ask that question. Yeah, I don't think any of these artists, you guys are not in the curator track, so you probably no. wouldn't know how that works. Um, but I, I used to be in the curator. So do you remember how it works about the pricing? Ted? Um, how you decide the pricing for the shows? Mm -mm. No. Okay. So it's uh, our gallery manager, his name is Nick, um, works with the, yes. the artists and we price our work at the same rate as practicing artists um, in the professional scene. So Nick um, is very attuned to the art world um, and he helps to price the work at competitive rates. Um, typically artists who, um, maybe sell more work, their work, their pieces are going to be priced more competitively. Um, and it's all really just based off of the setting and what is going on in the art world right now. Thank you so much. And you can, uh, if you'd like, continue on with the presentation. I know there were some things cool. that you still wanted to share. Yeah, so um, this is going to be a little bit, uh, well, just very informal. Um, we have not completely finalized this zine, but this is our first version of our zine. Um, it's called Bus of Doom. Um, here you can see it says, true stories of pace, paratransit, housing justice, mm -hmm. and other ableist nonsense. Uh, um, and I'll just scroll through quickly and then if you guys have questions about um, the setup of the zine or specific works we can talk about it. Um, so this first piece was made by Omar Abelshik. Um, it's called Bus of Doom. This is pastel on paper. It's actually oil pastel. The next one is Chris's. Um, is this, it's colored pencil, right? Yeah, so it's colored pencil on paper. Um, he, his quote says, my picture is about people who live in ICF, looking through windows into other communities. Um, I'll just zoom in here so that you can see these are individuals who are living in a housing complex. And you can see these guys' faces, they're not too happy about it. Okay, this piece was created by Ted. Um, this was made after a, a, a especially difficult day on the pace bus, yeah. where the pace bus driver decided that he was gonna load four wheelchairs, five wheelchairs. Five. Five, five. wheelchairs five. on the pace bus. Five um, wheelchairs. Yeah, so I Ted's know. quote says, I was on the bus and the bus was so crowded, we felt like sardines on the bus. It was no seats. Um, I mean, so I'm it sure- was true. Hell. It was true hell. <laughs> yeah, it was like everybody in the studio on the bus, four wheelchairs. It was just ridiculous. Um, so this is a piece by Steve Parr. I don't know how to say his last name. Hi. Parr, hi. Thank you, guys. Um, it's pencil and paper. He is actually a Chicago studio artist. So we do these um, self-advocacy meetings over Zoom so that each of the studios can participate. This is another piece by Omar. Um, it's a school bus on fire, and you can see these kids, they don't like being in there. Um, Nick actually included a, zine, a quote about the zine. Um, so they said, I hope you can take this zine and express how you feel in your daily life, or if you're traveling, I hope you enjoy our zine. Um, and then he also said, staff treat me different at home because of my disability and my vision. They don't let me go out in the community and they don't let me express how I feel. So I express how I feel through art. 
Um, so I feel like is a really, really great summation of the work that we do in Self Advocacy Group. This is a pretty popular work by Ari Carter. Um, she wrote a really awesome poem here. It says, the white pace bus is a nightmare. The white pace bus is a rot in hell. The white pace bus is a neglect. The white pace bus is an abuse. The white pace bus is a is a wheels on bus are round and round from hell. <laughs> okay, and then this piece is by Ted Hamill. It's called Pace Not Dropping Me Off at My House. So as you guys can see, we have a lot of complaints about Pace. This is a work from G. You saw him in the PowerPoint presentation. And you can see here, it looks like it's a small child, call it crying on a playground. Here we have a really great and powerful zine by Alicia. Um, she is one of the co-founders of the current iteration of the Arts of Life Self-Advocacy Group. And she has experienced a lot of discrimination in her life because she has a seizure disorder. So you can see here, um, you, she was kicked out of a school. The school is called Hanson Park Elementary School. Um, says here, I want to let you know that you can no longer go here. And then she was also um, actually discriminated against at her job. So she included that part in her um, comic as well. And then her quote down here says, when I was working at Lifetime Fitness, they fired me because I had seizures, even though they knew about it before I was hired. Okay, this is another work from G, um, featuring a child and a school bus and what looks like a school in the background. And then here you can see everyone who is included in the arts of life. We have a really great group and we're hoping for it to expand. Um, and our About Us says, we are the Arts of Life self-advocacy group. We speak our minds, we speak the truth, we expose ableist bullshit and support one another throughout all the nonsense. Um, artists, do you guys have anything to add about the scene? Chris, no? Nate, no. did you have anything? Uh, if you want to see some work on our whiteboard, Behind us, Rio will show you the pictures that we have on the whiteboard. Oh, yeah. So there's a, you can see in the background of the artists that they have some of their individual works up. Um, that's a nice backdrop. Ted, did you have anything to add about the zine? Um, uh, if you want to see some more of my art, uh, what you have to do is uh, go to uh, artswife.org. Uh, yep. Remember, I also included a link to y'all's profiles in the, the presentation we gave earlier. So when I send it to people, they'll be able to click on those links and it will go straight to your website or to your portfolio page. Um, anything else specifically no. about the zine? The zine should be up, be finished pretty soon. Yeah, so we have a couple more meetings We because we use a, pr a collective decision-making model. We basically have to collaborate on, you know, every work that, every piece of work that we do. Um, so the zine is not quite the final, project final right. version because we still have to meet with our self-advocacy group to go over the final edits and make sure that everyone is happy with everything um and that's all we Sorry. are going to and then once we're fine finalized uh, once it's finalized we will be sending it out to public and for them to see what we did and stuff like that. Yeah, so I think we could open the floor up for questions if anyone has questions about the zine in particular. 
we can this is Christine. Questions. Yes, there, uh, there are a couple questions. I did oh. want to read some of the comments that had come in while you were sharing the zine. One oh. was, wow, these are incredibly powerful. Another, this is all so great. Thank you for sharing. We have uh, two questions. How often oh. will you publish your zine? And how will you publish it? Like, will it be on the Arts of Life website, on the Facebook page? How are you going to distribute that? We yes, might yes, we might put it on Instagram, mm -hmm. Facebook, or the Arts of Life website page. Do you guys, do any of you guys have Instagram? Head, this is Christine, and I know the Alliance does not do Instagram, but there are some individual participants who are watching and listening today who indicate that they do have Instagram. Okay, they can look us up on Instagram. They Facebook. can look us up on Instagram um, or Art to Life. Yeah. Art to Life dot org. Um, that's where you can find us. That's where you can find us. Our, our music is also on YouTube. Spotify. Um, as far as how often we will be coming out with a scene, I have no idea. Um, I think that's something. It's a it's a fairly new project to us. Um, so I think we're focusing on coming out with the first one and seeing how it goes um sharing it out and seeing if people are interested and then hopefully we will continue with further iterations because i'm sure you guys know we always have problems with pace all we always the time. have problems with our housing and we always have problems with being discriminated against so it'll definitely be coming out pretty frequently yes we'll be coming out pretty frequently uh Depending on people's interest and their adorations of it. <laughs> yes. Do we have any more questions? This is Christine. No, we don't have any more questions. I will share that one of our participants shared their Instagram. Um, you can find TJ Gordon at Black Autist, also at C-H-I-D-P-O-C-C, -C, and you can find TJ at Timotheus Gordon. Those are the Instagram uh, locations where you can connect with TJ. I want to say on behalf of the Alliance, Thank you, thank you to Chris and to Nick and to Ted and to Rio and to all the artists who make Arts of Life such an amazing place to be and to learn and to grow and to connect. And I hope that all of our advisors who joined us today or all of our advisors who weren't able to join us, but who will watch this presentation, I hope they are able to take some of the information and use it in their self-advocacy member group meetings to really explore the different ways that people can advocate or speak up and speak out. It is not just with words. It is through artwork. It is through music. It's through words. Uh, but there's lots of different ways that we can speak up and speak out. And we thank you for giving us ideas and for no, challenging, 
Yeah, for challenging yeah. us to do differently. I, you, uh, I would hope that Tara, Tara Wiki is able to watch this uh, presentation. I think she is. Is she? You know what, Ted? Comments. She is here. She is on here. <laughs> she is watching and yeah. listening right now. Yeah, she just made a comment. I am yeah. here. <laughs> all right. So thank you all for taking time out of your day to join us. And thank you. Thank you again to Chris and to Nick and to Ted and to Rio and Annie and all of those who made this possible. We honor you and we thank you. You're welcome. Thank all you. right. Bye-bye, <laughs> all. Bye. Bye. Bye.